Dear ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on the time zone you are living in. I hope that you are all healthy and doing well in this extraordinary time with the COVID-19. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I'm very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our second ITTF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Planning for Training and Competition. I want to talk shortly about our webinar code, about our rules. Uh, we kindly ask all of the attendees to mute themselves and to turn off their videos to have a better quality of the audio. Just the panelists' uh, micro and webcam will be on. Uh, please uh, don't touch anything regarding uh, to our presentation slides or the recording. And uh, last but not least, please leave all your questions in the chat section. We will try to answer as many as possible of them later on in the questions and answer part of the webinar. The next point on the agenda is uh, the introduction of our today's panelists. Thank you very much to them for taking the time. The first panelist is Richard Brause from Germany. He is the current sports director of the German Table Tennis Association, the former German men's national team head coach. Hello, Richie. Hello, Dominic. Hello. Uh, the next uh, uh, panelist is a lady from Singapore, Ching Chung Hong, the youth development chief coach and women's team head coach for the intermediate squad. Hello, JJ. And the next panelist is Andrea Oystershek Urch from Slovenia. She is uh, the current Slovenian men's national team head coach. Hello, Andrea. Hello. 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 Last but not least, we have uh, Vladimir Diaz on our list from Puerto Rico. He is the current women's national team head coach of Puerto Rico. Hello, Vladimir. Hi, Dominic. Hello. Uh, furthermore, I would like uh, to warmly welcome our ITTF uh, High Performance in Development uh, Elite Coach Massimo Costantini. Hi, Max. Hello. Pass over to you. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. So today is it's a great day. We have uh, great personalities today join us in this uh, second webinar uh, reserved to the coaches. And uh, as Dominic said, we have a, we have a very interesting interesting um, topic to to explore uh, with the help of our guests and uh, for the benefit of, of uh, all the audience. But first of all, I want to congratulate you guys, all of you, because uh, your great achievement is very inspirational for many coaches around the world. So thank you very much and congratulations again. So um, just before starting, we have prepared some questions. You understand that the, the topic is very, very uh, big, let's say, involves so many areas uh, of, the, of the career of a player. Just tell about, tell about uh, us a uh, uh, few things, uh, a very short introduction, each of you. We can start from Richie. Just a quick introduction. From myself or like from the topics? Uh, for yourself. Yeah, like uh, um, I got introduced already from from Dominic. Uh, I was like long, long years national team players in, in Germany, like not in top position, but like, let's say three to five in Germany. Then after I took over as woman coach uh, after from 2004 to 2010, I've been a uh, man's team coach um, doing some reasonably good results, I believe. Then uh, um, I moved to Austria, was five years uh, part of the Werner Schlager Academy, very interesting time actually. Before then, uh, 2015, I, I, I got, got back to Germany uh, where I'm recently the high performance director of uh, the overall table tennis sports in Germany and enjoying this job very much. Thank you. Uh, how about you, uh, Andy, Andrea? Hello. What can I tell? I'm, I think that I'm older and I came from ex Yugoslavia. I played for the national team with Shurbek, Stepancic, and company. 
Uh, after I started like, coach in Italy, I be head coach in one uh, national center, eight years. Then I back with family in Slovenia, and here we started with center in Otocets. Maybe some coaches they know where is this. And uh, in the last part is uh, this head coach for the men men team Slovenia. I think that I'm only one woman who is the work with the men. <laughs> so it's great, <laughs> but is this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. JJ. Hello from Singapore, JJ. Okay, maybe maybe it's not ready yet. We can go with uh, Vladimir, just a very quick. Hello everyone. Uh, I am table, I was table tennis player when I uh, was 18 years old and I was in the national team 1995. And then I decided to retire when my daughter's born and I begin working with them, with Adriana and Melanie Diaz and also with the national team. And I am still here working with them and the, with my club in Utuado, Puerto Rico. I have a club also. And I am working about 25 years in table tennis. Before I was a baseball player, but I enjoy a lot to play table tennis. I, I decided to stay in this wonderful sport. Great, great. Um, so JJ is here. JJ? Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was a China national player. But I, after that, I moved to Singapore. I'm representing Singapore now uh, more than 10 years. After the career, I don't uh, some some sport management in uh, Singapore Sports Conference. So, you know, I'm up here. After that, I'm still uh, coaching a pathway in the Singapore Team Head Coach. Yeah. Uh, I did a TV two thousand seven year with the After this, two London Olympics, I did a TV with the two bronze medal. After uh, two thousand fourteen, I uh, I came to the youth wellness So in fact, about the youth wellness for about uh, more than five years. So I'm involved so many years in a different area. So I'm really like the table tennis. So uh, I don't know, just just a short short uh, 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 comment. What about the the video connection uh, and the and the online connection? Because uh, it seems to me the mic is not perfectly working. How it's with uh, connection of the, of the others? Everything is fine. You can hear each other very well. Yes, we, for me, for me some completely clear. To, we have some problems to hear, uh, JJ. Uh, yes, also, okay. I struggled. I struggled to hear uh, the, your voice, uh, and uh, maybe we can try to we can try to fix. Uh, uh, by the time uh, by the time uh, we can start, we have prepared some questions for you guys, and uh, so the topic is the planning. Uh, um, Training and uh, and competitions. So uh, we can follow the same uh, the same starting from you, Richie, and then Andrea, Vladimir, and JJ. So suppose we have a uh, you guys. You have to prepare the planning for the next season. Uh, forget now the the, the time we are uh, we are uh, we are having. Uh, so what are the the, the steps uh, that you 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 keep in consideration when? Uh, when you are there, you you are on the computer or whatever, and then uh, you have uh, to planning the next next season. What 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 are the steps? What what to keep in consideration? Yeah, and um, well, first of all, to keep in consideration uh, about which player we are talking about, about which age category, about uh, which level we are talking right now, because this is the crucial thing. To my point of view, not to get in a too deep discussion, it's very very crucial to have um, the preparation divided in order to 
uh, improve technique in order to improve the overall system. And this has to be always the highest goal of each player, especially when you are talking about the younger generation, especially in Europe. I'm not sure what is happening in Asia, but especially in Europe, we are running a little bit too much behind early results. That's why it's very crucial to find right time for practice to my point of view, to always keep in mind the right technique, to improve the technique, to have the basic technique uh, prepared always as a first step. If you are working with a little bit older players, then of course it's a little bit different. Then you have to focus maybe a little bit more on the um, athletic part, on the body, because uh, for older players the technique is already probably very advanced. So it's more about putting the things a little bit more together. So first thing is really divide into the junior or cadets part and the grown up, the adult part. But if we are talking about from, from the adults, it's mainly for me to find right time to practice your basic technique in order to come back in the normal rhythm. Then in a second part to have, of course, always the athletic way at the side. And as a third part to start a little bit more with service, with return, depending on also how much time you have before you have your first serious competition. Yes, of, of course, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting. And uh, I agree. I agree with you that uh, that the techniques uh, is the is the fundamental if you want to aspire to to high results. So it's uh, it's really important. And we understand that also the schedule is uh, is uh, depending affecting the proper preparation either junior or a, or a senior or a, any kind of other play. How about you, uh, Andrea? What uh, uh, what uh, what what is your opinion? What are the steps? I, I completely agree with Mr. Prowse, and they tell some good things. Uh, too much competition, too much tournament, and don't have a time for organized training, good training. Because I think that in uh, one season, uh, I usually do this. But put my team four times in the season for practice very hard, technical skills very hard, physical preparation very hard, and then you can go little up. And if you don't have time, because now it's too much tournament, too much uh, competition, and uh, maybe if I do two times in one season, I'm very happy for this. But it's, the big difference is with young player or with one uh, national senior team. This is the really big difference, how you prepare one uh, uh, plan for one season. So the, 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 the paradox is that the competition becomes a training, <laughs> not the, 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 yes, the, the yes, training for yes, the competition. Yes, because yes. When, you, when you have so many competitions, uh, then it's difficult to, to plan a proper training. I absolutely agree. Dominic, you want to say yes. something? Yes, I would, I would like to ask Andrea. Uh, Andrea, you mentioned the schedule of your players. Uh, how do you deal with the schedule of your players, uh, especially when they are performing in uh, in different countries abroad? For example, last year Denny Koschul played uh, in one team with me in Austria and Darko and Boyan. They are they are in on the German league. They have different match uh, dates and so on. How, how do you deal with this? Two years ago, it be more easy because we have a center and work with Denny. Darko and uh, Fribar and Svetko, all these young players working in center. And uh, every day you can Im improvise something because you must something sometimes improvise in the training. Now it's more difficult because uh, three players play in German Bundesliga, uh, Boyan play in Italian league. And uh, how I do in the Start. I take the calendar. <laughs> I put yes. all these uh, dates, and then uh, I go in Sabrican. One, uh, one uh, uh, every month. I'm be there sure more than ten days with these three players. With Boyan, 
when go to the Zagreb practice, sometimes uh, together with one uh, training camp better practice. But uh, now it's really, really difficult because if you look at the calendar with the Bundesliga, Champions League, with the uh, mm. I think that uh, how I work before, I organize so far all. I know what is my target in this season, exactly one tournament only, maximum two. Now is uh, very difficult, very, yeah. very difficult. And uh, sometimes you like in, uh, in the sea, you go up and down, up and down and try to, to take the best. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's uh, it's true, yeah. It's a very tough and full schedule and uh, it has to be uh, perfect planning and uh, yeah, I, in your situation, the because only the player, follow. Sorry, because the player is not so old, it's young, and they want to uh, have a always good result. But in the same moment, you must uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, technical skills. You must prepare him that don't uh, uh, play wrong. The technique must for the high performance technique must be perfect. And Good. This is really difficult. Good. Thank you very much, Andrea. No. What about you, Cheche? Okay, next question. Yeah, in the age of the new rights, it's quite different. Also, I think I'm going to the Canada, the Canada, the Korea, and the Thai, the Chinese country, it's a different environment. Uh, I think the Singapore is more about the training competition and the uh, education. So uh, I'm not in fact the all all uh, the players, the students here. So when when I play, they are the training education schedule is different than the school school education superior. Also another thing I have around the project, you know. In the youth area, the, sometimes the nature and the national sport can support how much or then or the parents can, how much can spend or some sponsor, how much can get. So, so many uh, successful is along the, uh, my planning. So usually um, for the youth player, First thing is for the performance, I have to go to the uh, foundation. So the competition, I get uh, some guidelines, the key guidelines. One is the uh, minimum training time, whatever the standard house are, then after the uh, how long can go to the competition. So for example, maybe uh, one and a half months can participate in one competition. And the one year we have the focus the two important competition. We allow the three important uh, competition to to start a summer small competition to to play and to play. So I think the Asia and the Europe are quite different. Also, Singapore don't have the some league. Uh, I think we remember whatever has the some the the national league. Singapore don't have the about the. Uh, lead, lead competition. So only we uh, participate to the ITP competition. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's still, still we have some uh, some uh, some problem to to hear you properly, but uh, uh, we we understood that the, the the most of your uh, your thing we understood. Yes, maybe Dominic, when we go on the on yes. Vladimir. Yes, but before I would like uh, to say to Cheche, Cheche, I kindly ask you maybe to go a little bit closer to the microphone or maybe to use uh, a headset. Maybe then the quality is better because the video quality is very fine, but we can't hear you that clear. Thank you, Cheche. Oh, I can the, the, the mic first. <laughs> okay. okay, by the time we can... Uh, uh, Vladimir, how about Hello. you? Yeah, about us, I need to tell you, I want to tell you that uh, I begin a new process because it's in totally quarantine and I decide to invert the, the 
training and now uh, we are practicing a lot of things tactical things and I am I decide to watch the match that they played before in uh, 2019 and 2020 and it's a very good time to see the mistakes in the technique and also tactical mistakes I decide to to, to take some time with this and they are learning a lot about this because uh, if you are still working with your mind and your knowledge is for I think with the strokes we can fix this later but if you can learn and see what are your problems maybe you can understand better and this is this is the perfect time to to learn this because most of the time when we have when we are in the hall of practice we focus more in the technique and so on we need, we are but now i have time to to look this uh, and they are also with me all the time and we are practice at home and about the schedule but, but uh, about the schedule i am thinking that when ITTS decide to put the new calendar but we, we want to play at, at least two or three tournaments uh, per month and also thinking about the olympic qualification because adriana is in the olympics already but melanie not and i am i need to think about the world ranking and many other things you know also we are working with physical conditioning very important we are making a lot of things with a uh, rope with plyometrics and apps and working very hard in this uh, area and i think this is not a waste of time we are we can use this time to learn and to make different things this is my opinion of this situation good um Thank you. Thank you. The, Dominic, do, do you have a, a question for them or? A... Yes, yes, I do have. I would like to start in the same order with Richie. Uh, Richie, uh, what are the crucial points when you are thinking of uh, periodization in table tennis? Well, uh, the main main thing is, to my point of view, that uh, general periodization in table tennis is not possible anymore. You have to move away from the system as you had, let's say, 20 years before, uh, when you have two highlights and you are preparing in a way that you have really the preparation uh, like three months in order to be very fit. That's why, for example, I think the, the Asian players, they are doing much better. Uh, because they have a little bit less the league structure as uh, we are having in Europe. Um, nevertheless, I believe the Europe's, uh, the Europeans, they are doing quite well at the Olympics because at the Olympics they find this extra time of doing a better preparation there, finding the extra time in order to do regular practice. To my point of view, it's crucial from, uh, uh, from the periodic way of thinking. Um, to have at least four weeks without any competition, four weeks with uh, uh, practicing regular exercises, practicing, practicing in a way that you have maybe in the first uh, two weeks a little bit the longer exercises, the regular exercises in combination with athletic and then in the second week where you have a little bit less athletic but a little bit more service and receive. But the main thing is there to find a regular time without any competition. And that's I think especially in Europe has to be the goal. Um, Nevertheless, at this moment, due to the fact that the um, table tennis is a whole year sport with the league system, with the world championship, with the European or Asian championship or African championships, and at the same time, uh, you have uh, uh, the uh, WTT in the future, the world tour, and if you if you are planning to do everything at the at the same time, you are really struggling with finding the right periodization. That's why I think uh, Massimo raised an interesting subject. Sometimes it's important to play 
if you cannot avoid playing the tournament, to use the tournament still in a way that you're doing a lot of, let's say, basic work around your tournaments. Um, to use the, the tournaments, uh, uh, especially when you have two tournaments uh, uh, one by one, to have the micro cycle in between three, four days without only traveling, but like doing athletic training, doing uh, some uh, uh, normal way of practicing in order to have the combination. Because to my point of view, what we have to really learn is to use our time better. It's not as 20, 30, 40 years ago, where you can really prepare 60 days in order to playing well in one tournament. Yeah, totally agree with you. I, I guess that uh, for most of the national team coaches, uh, the biggest challenge at the moment, yeah, and uh, has to be perfectly planned. Uh, thank you very much, Richie. Uh, what about you, Andrea? Uh, what are the crucial points for you when you are thinking of uh, periodization? I uh, agree completely with Mr. Mr. Prause, really. Uh, if uh, you remember when, I don't know, 45 years ago, you have uh, one world champions every two years, one Europe champions every two years. You have may maximum maybe five, six tournament, open tournament. And you can do programmation for the tournament with both teams specifically. Because now you have a three months to organize all for the world champion and you can do what you want, remember. Now, every week tournament, every week uh, league, every Champions League, it's really terrible. And um, uh, if they have a, if you have a player who have the problem with technique or maybe with physical preparation, you are really that you take the pistol and kill <laughs> someone. It's very difficult. We must. I think that we must uh, change something. But it's, this is very difficult because uh, every player now looking only world ranking. They play every week one tournament for the work ranking and they, they won't play. It's not possible they won't uh, go there in this tournament. Then happen that uh, if you don't really good physical condition, if you don't good uh, technical skills, uh, I think that many young player never, very difficult, not never, but very difficult growing up in for the best 100 player in the world. Yeah. And this is a big problem. After maybe if you, so my uh, PowerPoint, you see what how we can do in the last six years. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, have a, I have one observation on this. Uh, absolutely correct what you guys say. Uh, so we, we have the, the, what I understand, I was also, I coached the India and other countries. So what I understand, uh, we have as a coaches, we have to, uh, put together the individual needs uh, that they they all think about uh, uh, the ranking, they all think about uh, playing a lot of competition because through the competition they can improve the ranking. They have they, this kind of uh, mindset. But our mindset uh, is to see the things a little bigger, you know, to, to, have, a, to have a longer vision, how to make them uh, better in, uh, in, uh, in the future. Uh, so this one is going to to clash a little bit because uh, uh, either we have to start thinking in a very short period, considering also the the the, the players they want they want they want to play the more tournament as possible. So how can we combine? How can we uh, make the things uh, working together? In in our perspective, we should. Uh, follow the player or we should compromise uh, uh, what, what do you think maybe a little one step back to Richie again uh, if you can try to answer me on this Richie I think I think time is time is time is running we we have to adapt with the uh, with the time that uh, is coming up right now um, I think even for the juniors um, we cannot stop them playing international tournaments. This makes no sense to my point of view. Of course, we want to have the challenge with other nations, 
but uh, I think the goal is to use the time better that we are having um, uh, that we are having with our players on international level. This is one step, and then to get back there, the main thing is, and that's maybe why we have to lead the discussion a little bit in this direction. In order to learn the right technique, in order to uh, have a life, still a kind of a periodic system, we have to find gaps where we can practice in the in in a longer in a longer way. Would be nice to have this. The one of the one of the um, major things there is the schedule. To have a schedule where we find ourselves in the possibility of doing a practice in in uh, in our home countries. Um, and if we are asking about, because this is interesting for sure to all, to everybody who is listening right now, to my point of view, we are talking about 30, 40, 50 days at least every year where we have to have the fine, where we have to have uh, the time of practicing together. And that's the, uh, the classical periodical system. If we can find this time, then we can use the smaller way in order to have the combination with the combination of having a tournament and having at the same time practice during the tournament of uh, keeping the technical skills on a highway first i believe especially for the younger generation start early enough also we have the challenge with school and everything um, find the time where you don't have a competition and in case uh, uh, you, you have to play the competition, really follow the player in order to make a plan around the competition. And that's why I'm also asking the ITTF, we have to have the possibility during the practice, during the competition, still having right practice possibilities, training halls, right venues around, because we have to use every day the possibility of practice, a little bit like our bigger brother tennis. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Richie. How about you, Vladimir? Mm, well, we are, we play just only, we play only uh, ITTF. We don't play in leagues. For I think for for us it's easier than the European players that they play a lot of things. Uh, and mo uh, normally we use this system. November and December, we prepare physically very, very well with a professional of this uh, area. And January, we begin with a technique process uh, two times per day after the physical preparation is done. And then we begin to play most of the time in February, March, we begin to play some tournaments uh, like Challenge and something like this, Latin American Championships. And then we, we decide to play more difficult tournaments like Platinum and World Tour, depending on the calendar. Uh, this is our system normally. is I try to, to use this because it, we are prepared physically. You can you can be in very good shape for all uh, all year calendar because ITTA, everybody knows that has a many competition and we have a lot of things to to to, to, to do qualifications and ranking and many things this is uh, my situation with the national team i think for the junior players uh, as they say there's different they need to combine different eh? because is uh, different for everyone and for the people of Latin America we, when we go to Europe and when we go to Asia we need to use this time this is for us it's very important to try to to use uh, the in the better form possible good this is, yeah. well, so please Cheche could you also share your experience with it uh, for for my country, the Singapore is uh, I think is, uh, <laughs> use the competition for the training to the improve their the performance at the technical. Because why the reason is uh, 
uh, training partner, training opponents, very important. Table tennis is like the single play, you know, always a single face to face, but the training have to one team. So many different types of training partner. Then you can uh, give certain time to training can improve. So I uh, think have to find uh, another way can how can improve their the my, my, my player to standard how to improve their how how far how in, increase their the standard. This is a big challenge. That's why uh, my training and the competition play the key thing is use the competition to improve and uh, try to let them to performance of course uh, between the competition different competition i use the certain training time as cannot many like the 14 days 20 days one month two months try to separate about a very small period about the seven to seven to ten they use the like the short term period between the short term period play the competition of course we have focused some key very important competition this is a long period so we use the practice plus competition this is i think my country is a good game uh my play our youth player uh, according to the war ranking the about the compared to the five four years ago now improved a lot this global ball is really reached the under 18 number one some under 50 also reached the highest level the top 10 so this i think is uh, uh, so far we do that this way is uh, better we cannot like the china korea uh, even japan uh, taipei they have a lot big team more than 20 50 players can team together we are a big challenge for us. That's why we use the competition way to improve uh, our player understand this uh, my opinion. JJ, thank you very much for your thank interesting you. approach and your insights. And uh, Massimo, we, we do know that uh, Andrea, she prepared a very nice uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation for us, uh, how uh, the system is in Slovenia or how you know the how the system grew in Slovenia. Andrea, could you could you please uh, tell us uh, something about uh, the system in Slovenia or your current situation? But this PowerPoint is like how be six years when we start uh, six years ago with this kind of system. Now, unfortunately, this center is closed and the player is round in in Germany or in Italy, only young players still practice in uh, Slovenia in our club. Uh, if you show, I can speak a little bit about this. Uh, how we start uh, with uh, this center, because we have some vision and um, the target of this vision is we uh, have a, that we have a good, uh, Good uh, team in the future. How you see, this is a this is a situation in uh, 2013. This is reality. In Slovenia, we have around 40 clubs, around 800 active players, not more. And uh, our federation, they have a budget less than three. Uh, 100,000 uh, euro for four in one year for salary uh, the the who work in the in the office salary for the coaches and uh, for all tournament the cadet junior and senior teams next uh, but uh, we have um, in this moment have a good cadet generation we found five, six uh, very young players, and then we had one question: What to do? And uh, the Slovenian Federation said, "Okay, we open one center, and we can try this." Uh, we found the center in Novo Mesto. They have a good accommodation. 
uh, food uh, for education for these children and uh, with football, with coaches. Okay, my husband is there and I'm there in the tournament. Uh, so we only use many time for the trip between the accommodation, the student house and this uh, hall. Every day we lose more than two hours. But okay, doesn't matter. Uh, it's important things in this moment that uh, in this center can participate uh, who want, but not younger than 15 years. We take if uh, the players for Poland Slovenia, not only the best, we take uh, number 16, but uh, they must have 15 years old. Next, please. Okay, when we open this center, uh, we put uh, cargo. First is bring this young player close to Tokic. Because when Tokic in this moment, the uh, only one high level player in Slovenia. And the second, one day we would like to have a high level team uh, for the represent Slovenia in, in the world. Right? And uh, in this five years program, uh, I put uh, macro cycle, meso cycle and micro cycle. Uh, yes, macro cycle is a long term planning. Uh, that this means for 15 years old uh, boys in next five years came to the top 150 in the world ranking. Uh, this is our vision at this moment, uh, our vision, but for this vision, we need to know what is uh, modern table tennis, what will be modern table tennis after five years, and what is the good concept of playing for uh, each player. Next. Uh, okay, in Mesocycle here we, decide for each player one most important tournament in one season. What to work in the same time for this tournament and for working for uh, technical skills. Very important is this period that uh, uh, player make good results, but in the same time, uh, he must improve grow technically. And uh, because if they have a good result, the satisfaction and uh, uh, the satisfaction, family be satisfaction, coach in the club be satisfaction, and uh, we with this can uh, work much better with technicals and physical uh, preparation. Next. Okay, then we have a uh, macro cycles means short term in planning. Here we are talking about full tournament in one season. And uh, every week is different. It's very difficult this season because you must think about daily technical planning, daily tactical planning, video analyzing. We must thinking for physical preparation and period of the of rest. Rest is very, very important because after rest, you can see the improvement. If you don't uh, rest enough, uh, you never see the player go, growing up. The biggest problem is how to plan everything and reach all targets for micro, meso, and macro cycles uh, together. And now in with this situation, with this COVID-19, uh, this is something new. I think it's new for everybody. <laughs> yes, we have uh, no experience. So, how I do, I improve. Uh, in, 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 not improve, in, in improvisation, no? And uh, time we 
tell if we are going the right way. But I think that uh, maybe it's not so bad that player or I tell before, uh, maybe uh, take some rest. Of course, usually in the last five years, uh, we really play and practice every day. And uh, last thing, I speak about uh, his team, about this young player, Danny Kozul and uh, Darko Jorgic. Uh, and with this boy, we reach our goal. We breaking both in the 100 world ranking. We got bronze medal in Europe Championship team and we qualified it for Olympic Games. Since I think that for six years we, we target good and we work uh, good. But this is all of this is um, uh, like how I tell it in the paper. <laughs> in the real life, uh, happened many many things. Many things can happen and happened here in Slovenia too. Some injury, some boys ill, or some problem in family. Many players uh, don't do this target, but we, I'm happy that Zul uh, and Jorgic do, and now in the better people are the same growing up. And I hope that we have uh, for next five years a uh, team for the tournament in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you, Thank you Andrea. It's yeah, okay. A great achievement of your team to reach uh, the Olympic Games qualification. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you also for your interesting insights uh, to, your, to the current situation in your country. Uh, now it's time for the questions and answers part. And um, uh, as uh, Andrea mentioned before, um, it is very important uh, to talk about the rest uh, because uh, many players being injured and of course, then losing time uh, for practice and uh, of course also can participate in, in tournaments. So we have a very good uh, question from our dear colleague uh, Jasna Rada, former Faslic. Uh, I would like to ask Richie, Richie, how would you compare these new times of busy schedule to the times when athletes had more time for proper preparation in terms of injury prevention? Well, um, what I see is that uh, nowadays uh, uh, the athletic is, let's say, more advanced. And when you see the, uh, the top squads, they are always um, traveling with their athletic coach, with their doctor. So I think uh, uh, it was from the overall preparation much easier in former generation to kind of um, um, be prepared or to recover after injuries. Nowadays, it's really um, without the athletic coaches, without the doctors always being around, I think it's not possible to keep a very long years uh, of, uh, um, yeah, of a, of a career. Uh, I see players like Ball or Samsonov who are really very often followed by their medicine team and therefore it's also possible to have a long year's career. But I think uh, uh, in former times it was much easier because you had more time to recover. And uh, nowadays it's really tough to to really even for a bigger injury. You see, if you speak to if you talk to Timo Ball, he say, OK, I'm enjoying very much table tennis. I'm still uh, having no plans of of calming down or retiring. I'm really looking forward to the next years, but I'm afraid a bigger injury. Um, this will really uh, change my plans because there's not so much time of recovering. Thank you very much, Ritzi. Uh, Massimo, uh, do you all have also one other question for yeah, our well, guests? Yeah, yeah, well, questions are coming on the on the chat. Uh, this one uh, maybe is interesting for all of you because uh, uh, you all will be involved in, uh, in uh, Olympic preparation. We have a question from Michael Katsikadelis. 
Uh, basically, he says that uh, uh, after the, the the pandemic, everything stopped, and the the, the players also stopped uh, doing uh, their preparation. That was in the middle of the of the season, actually, just before the the uh, World Championships, and not far away from the Olympic Games. So. Since now the Olympic Games uh, uh, got postponed uh, 2021, um, what do you think uh, will be the the, pre the preparation? Would uh, the, your players in general uh, would be ready to uh, uh, Tokyo 2021 uh, after uh, four months or three months uh, totally stopped uh, from the international competition? To whom is the question? To everybody, all, all of you, because you all have uh, players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm if I'm starting if I'm starting again, I think uh, okay. The overall situation with the coronavirus, of course, is really threatening for for everybody, and uh, would be nice to have uh, uh, the the uh, new normality. I will call it like this. Be running again. But uh, if you take something good out of the lockdown is uh, and I'm ca I can only talk uh, uh, about Germany right now. Um, the international tournaments are locked down, but for the national teams in some weeks, we are able of having uh, uh, very good uh, practice possibilities in one to one situation in our center. And it really gives us um, the first time since uh, may maybe years, the possibility of working hard on uh, technical weaknesses, working hard on the body. So to answer your question right, I think the challenge would be if uh, um, you wouldn't have postponed uh, uh, the Olympic 2020 and kind of the Olympics would have been the first tournament after a lockdown. Because, of course, all the players, they need kind of uh, some weeks uh, of tournaments before or some month of tournaments in order to uh, to come back. But like to have a three or four month shutdown where you have the possibility of practicing, that's, uh, I think, uh, not a bad thing in order of thinking about the practice possibilities of building up the weaknesses of uh, getting some things to do what you always wanted to do with the players working in a decent way. So if we have this lockdown and followed by a step by step opening with some open tournaments, with some international tournaments without the traveling restriction and at the end you're ending up uh, at the world or at the Olympics 2021, I think uh, uh, we would be prepared. So it's it's also it's a good opportunity to have them all together. <laughs> Normally, yeah, it's it's you know like it's it's a small it's a small border. Of course, uh, uh, you want to get back to your normal life, but that's why I'm calling it a new normality. You have to be taking the best possibilities out of it. And if everybody is asking for, we need more time for practice. You have to use this time right now in order to build up things because right now. I'm I'm quite sure the next month uh, we are not thinking about tournaments. We are more thinking about playing possibilities or practice possibilities. So, Vladimir, Adriana will be ready for the Olympics 2020, which is in 2021. <laughs> of course, yes. Of course, yes. She will be ready. But this is a new scenario and we need to do different things. As I told you before, we are working in tactical uh, issues and videos and working with her sister because we are locked down. And in Puerto Rico, we have a very good association, but we don't have a, a very strong structure like other countries like China, Germany. For us, it's very challenging this because uh, to take a flight or to go to, to Asia or Europe is almost impossible. Now we need to, to, know, to, to see how we, we can uh, improve with this situation, but of course we will be ready and, and we will be in shape very soon. Great, great. Uh, next. I, I think that how is now physical preparation in this period of the my player never be better before 
before and after, because in the last six weeks, uh, uh, he worked really with physical preparation and uh, with uh, Darko, because living the same time time uh, that me, we practice not every day, but every second day we, we practice one to one. M many multiples and uh, we analyze some matches and talking about uh, table tennis really, really so much. With Boyan, work with te with um, Skype and with Danny the same, but not this is the better situation because in we have a little small hole here in Hrasnik and we practice. Then I think now it's back in Germany and uh, <clears throat> I think this Darko uh, now if they start play Bundesliga, uh, I think that they must play a semi-final of um, uh, Bundesliga. Yeah. It's not so so problem for him. I hope. I hope. Maybe I don't do so many mistakes. <laughs> But okay. Good. This corona is really, I think that is more problem I have because I am not, uh, for me, it's not normal that I stay at home. And this is the big problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cook too much. <laughs> yes, I must cook, I must clean, I must do many things. <laughs> okay. Okay. JJ. Yeah. Okay, for my players, so now cannot train and go to the hall. Of course, the good time for our players to the improve the, the physical training. Also, another way they can analyze or review they are the previously match to thinking about more things. Then for the preparation, sometimes uh, some player they can use their own table in the home, but. Um, most of the player they they cannot play, they cannot touch the ball. So of course they are the if the more time can can uh, physical training or for for the prepare for the future. Uh, this uh, so far Singapore the uh, no no. Good, Dominic. Yes. Yeah, another another question in our chat. Uh, uh, Boanerges Amon wrote, "Hello. As I understand, our direction is to redesign our training and development programs based on continental seasons and compromise with major international tournaments, particularly uh, WTT and Olympics." Uh, JJ. Let's let's start with you. What, what do you think about that, or what is your approach? What? Sorry, the question. One more. I have a, the question. The question is uh, the one Eric Samon asks. I understand our direction is to redesign the training and development programs based on continental seasons and compromise with major international tournaments, particularly. Uh, WTT and Olympics. It's quite difficult to answer. <laughs> uh, I am agree with this point of view. Of, well, of the, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think it's the same. I mean, uh, we we understood that we have different needs in different continents, and we have to be extremely flexible and. Uh, great uh, adaptation uh, spirit uh, in order to 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 meet uh, so many needs that, uh, that a national team of, uh, of uh, maybe individual players uh, uh, might have so yes we have to we have to make a lot of compromise uh, kind of uh, acrobatic let's say acrobatic work <laughs> and continental and continental issues like us because for us it's different than europe and asia and for me, this point of view is totally correct. Anybody else wants to add anything on this? No, it's 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 uh, it's always possible to add something more. But I think uh, the main thing is there 
um, the compromise uh, is the first step with the calendar. The calendar has to really kind of synchronized, has to be, um, I think maybe some some tournaments less, maybe the club structure a little bit in a different way. And uh, yeah, would be nice if, if ITTF would be uh, like in this way able to synchronize the whole the whole system. Um, as only then we have the chance to find right time for practice. Everything is connected there and it's for sure a big challenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much, everybody. And now I would or we would like to hear uh, as last time from the players, a final statement from each of you. Just uh, please uh, fill up the following sentence. We start with Richie and then continue as we started before the round. Yes, it's going to be all right because. It's going to be all right because we just keep on working. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richie, as we know you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, please. Uh, for the right that we start. <laughs> that's finally started working and go to the tournament and not stay at home, <laughs> not stay at home. <laughs> okay. Thank you, JJ. Hello, hello, can you hear? Okay, hello, I can hear you. Yes, uh, we are better can go to the hall. We don't want to stay at home at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> and Vladimir? Because we need to adapt to this new situation and we will be again on the road. Thank you very much. Great. Great. Yes, and uh, also I would like uh, to thank all of you, all of our panelists, uh, for giving so many interesting uh, uh, also, I can say some of them were personal insights and advices and, and also thank you very much for your positive messages or sending the, the yeah, advices to the attendees uh, how they could uh, cope with the extraordinary time of, extraordinary time of COVID-19. And uh, yeah, as we all uh, heard from you, it's uh, really, I can say, the planning for training competition is one of the most most uh, difficult parts maybe in, in, in the job of a, of a coach, of a sport director, whoever is involved in this process. So, yeah, it, it takes, uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, but it's for sure, uh, yeah, uh, highly, highly important. Yeah. So, again, thank you very much. Uh, everybody for taking the time uh, to share your knowledge, uh, your insights with us. And uh, I want to thank also all of the attendees uh, for their interest and of course uh, for the attendance and uh, for, being, for, for being muted this time, for staying muted. Thank you very much this time. The, the sound was much, much clearer. It was very, very enjoyable, I can say. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our next webinar on next Tuesday at uh, 2 p.m. Central uh, European Summertime. Uh, the topic will be performance assessment, a tool for referees and umpires. So that's all from my side today. Thank you very much again. And uh, I would like uh, to pass over to Max uh, to uh, let him uh, speak the closing words. Thank you very much. Pass over to you, Max. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I I join your uh, your uh, uh, thanks uh, for the for the panelists. Uh, very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, we could not uh, reply to other questions, uh, and we try to to reply to you guys uh, uh, as soon as we can. Uh, I want to thank also all the attendees, uh, and uh, and it was great. It was a great session, and uh, again, good luck. Uh, for uh, your uh, your job, your career. Good luck for your players. Uh, and yes, it's gonna be alright because we are very strong. Bye. 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 Bye.